When we think of a president giving an address, that in and of itself is meaningful and stressful enough. But with Franklin Roosevelt, there's this added complication of him having to create the illusion that he could walk. FDR always felt that, um, that it would be a political liability if he were seen as this kind of helpless man in a wheelchair. Ever since he was inflicted with polio in 1921, he was determined to develop a way of walking. So as he said, he didn't scare the hell out of people. Probably around 11 o'clock or so, his valet, Arthur Prettyman, started preparing him for his major address. This means getting dressed. Well, getting dressed for Roosevelt was an arduous task. It will take him about an hour. Life was an effort for this man. The kinds of things that we take for granted, getting dressed in the morning, walking, leaving aside the things that we don't have to do, writing speeches to rally a nation at war. He couldn't put his pants on. Imagine, you know, the, the indignities of this, and, and yet the strength of the man at the center of the story. Prettyman had a routine. He would take Roosevelt and lie him flat on his back on the bed. And the first thing he would do is put on his braces. And the purpose of the brace is to lock his legs in, to make them completely stiff so they can't bend. The braces were strapped both at the knee and the thighs. They were pulled as tight as possible to give Roosevelt a very stiff-legged gait. The next thing he would do is put on his shoes. So he'd put on his socks and his black shoes. Then the pants had to be put on over the shoes and over the braces. This was a very difficult process of swaying Roosevelt and moving Roosevelt back and forth as the pants were maneuvered first over the shoes, then over the braces, and then pulled up to his waist. Once the pants were on, he would pick him up off the bed and put him back into his wheelchair. And when it came to his so-called walking, uh, really he wasn't walking at all. Essentially what Roosevelt tried to do was to cover up the extent of his disability. And he does it by using his son's arm, as one might a parallel bar, and also would use a cane in the other hand. He would move by essentially throwing his body weight forward. Because he, he couldn't move his legs. His legs were actually locked in these braces. They were like poles, and they were lifeless. And so he would lunge forward with his shoulders and use his upper body to drag himself forward. James would take a step forward, the crutch would move forward, the braces would swing forward. James, crutch, braces. James, crutch, braces. It almost created the appearance that he was walking. He once confessed that he considered himself one of the greatest actors in the nation. And he was one of the greatest actors because once those braces were put on, once he was finally prepped, once he was finally dressed, he was not a helpless man in a wheelchair. He was the leader of what would be the most significant military alliance the world had ever seen. <laughs>